Let's reflect on the glory years, the Bill oh, Hudnut years. The Bill Hudnut years. <laughs> oh. um, I'm, this is your story. So, obviously, the Colts. I remember sitting, anchoring the noon news, uh -huh. and we had reporters and cameras out there. Uh -huh. And here you come onto the field, holding the hand of Mr. Ursay. <laughs> and he was short, and I was tall. And he always <laughs> talked about how I yanked his arm out of his shoulder. But the, <laughs> and the excitement was yeah. just, in, it was infectious. There were ten thousand people in the stands on a Monday morning just to greet Ursay and to greet the Colts. And it was just very, very exciting. It was certainly, when people ask me uh, about high points in my yeah. 16 years, that was certainly one of them. And the coming of the Colts, I think, has made a big difference to the city. Mm -hmm. And I'm just so grateful that they're still there, mm -hmm. grateful for uh, Jimmy Ursay and the roots that they now have in Indianapolis. And uh, I just hope that it continues <laughs> with a new stadium, Lucas Oil, right, right. replacing the old one that we built. You built a stadium without a team. That's right. right. I mean, what foresight did? Yeah. What now? What if that hadn't worked out well? Oh my goodness, we wouldn't we wouldn't be having this conversation now. Well, maybe but. we we I would have been regarded as somebody who had uh, a big white elephant on my hands, <laughs> even though. We were able, as a result of the expansion of the convention center, to book a lot of convention business right. and expand our capacity mm -hmm. to welcome bigger crowds and increase that. For example, before, as I recollect the figure, before the, we announced the Colts were coming, we'd already booked in something like $280 million worth of new convention business with no sign of a team. Wow but into that new facility, which could seat about 60,000. It just coincidentally had about 100 yards of concrete down at the bottom. God, it's amazing all the things you remember and all. It's amazing the leap of faith you took to do things. I mean, was it in your mind? Was it in your heart that I'm just going to go forward with some of these things and hope for the best? Well, that's a good question and really I just believed in what we were doing, and so I didn't second-guess myself. Uh, I took a few days to think about going for the Colts because there was a fellow in town named Bob Welch who was trying to get a team, and uh, Bob and I had run against each other in 1975, <clears throat> and obviously I'd won, <laughs> but I, I had to think about it. Then I said, go for it, you yeah. know. And we had this stadium that was already about three quarters built, and the Colts came, and the, the, the stadium was dedicated, and the Colts played their first game in August of 1984. And what can I say? No guts, no glory. Right, right. You yeah. know, not that I wanted the glory, but no pain, no gain. And building that without the sign of a of a team coming was, uh, you, as you put it very well, a real leap of faith. My dear friend, uh, my successor, Goldsmith, Steve Goldsmith, said to me once, Bill, I never in a hundred years would have done that. But uh, I just had confidence that we could work it out, and I had confidence in the people around me, particularly uh, Dave Frick and Jim Morris and some of those people who were dear friends, but also comrades in arms. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, I just kept on going forward, and I didn't really think about the downside if yeah. we hadn't gotten the uh, uh, NFL team. What do you think of Andrew Luck now? I think he's terrific. Uh, we are so lucky to have him after Peyton Manning. Oh, I know. And uh, I know. he's got a new wide receiver that they drafted. And You keep up on all of this. <laughs> well, I try. <laughs> hey, but... Deflategate, what about that? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, well... It was against Indianapolis, and I don't know whether Andrew Luck noticed anything or not, or whether anybody, the guys that caught the ball from the Indianapolis side, I don't know whether they noticed anything or not. They're yeah. not in the news. It's all about Brady and it's the Patriots. That, yeah. And that is, that's something they have to deal with. So. Yeah, and I think it was a, a cheap shot if it's true. On we go. On we go. Okay. Um, 
some other events that I remember going through. The Pan Am Games. Yeah, weren't they wonderful? Oh, they were wonderful. Yeah, back in 1987. I remember that. And uh, George Bush, who was, I guess, uh, vice, was he president or vice? He was vice president at the time under Ronald Reagan, came out to open the Pan Am Games out there at the Speedway with a huge parade and festivities that were put on by Disney. And uh, then that. it lasted for several days, all different kinds of sports, wonderful venues. We played Cuba and baseball. I remember it. And uh, the swimming at the natatorium and the track and field over at the uh, uh, outdoor uh, track and field site. And the velodrome where they had. Oh, yeah. And I could hardly believe it because there were crowds at the velodrome. And you, every time you drive out the interstate there, you don't see many crowds no, these no, days. No. It was amazing. And the people, different languages and different. Yeah. And, and we, we all got along. Can you imagine that a headache they'd have now with security? And then there, you just yeah. walked in, you walked wherever you wanted well, to go. Well, the thing I liked about the Pan Am Games was that it gave Indianapolis positive courage all up and down the Western Hemisphere. Yes. And uh, it was a fluke in a way that we got the games because Quito, Ecuador is supposed to have them. They said, we can't do it. So three years out rather than four, which is what it usually takes to p plan for something like that. We said, we'd like it. Havana said they'd like it. Uh -oh. We computed, uh, competed against uh, the Castro people and the Pan American Paso, it was called, uh, awarded Indianapolis the franchise. So in 1984, we had to start on a three-year program to get ready for the Pan Am Games. It's amazing. You remember a lot of details. You're a detail-oriented guy. Well, maybe way back then, but Joan, I can't remember your name. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> Patty. That's okay, John. All right. <laughs> there you go. That's fine. Yeah. That's fine.